Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday, the 13th of October, and you are now joining us for, I think, the 73rd in a row, Knowledge <laughs> Bowl Light Hangout. Thank you. Uh, sponsored by Topher Spin Meteorites. So, uh, you know, with a lot of the palisades, what I do is I put a magnet on the back and I do a standoff on there so uh, <clears throat> you can see that it won't be touching the glass. Um, you know, Japar is kind of a neat one because you would think with most pieces you wouldn't have to do that. Um, this thing was uh, dug out of the ground in May of 2008 when they were uh, building a furniture factory in Indonesia. So they were excavating uh, to put the factory in and they hit a 499.5 kilogram <laughs> big round Whoa. chunk of palisade. <laughs> so... I mean, you can imagine Indonesia is a is a pretty uh, pretty wet environment. So it had uh, like uh, yeah. it had about a, an inch to two inches of, of like just pure oxides all around it. Yeah. Um, but even penetrating it, a lot of the actual uh, metal inside of uh, Japara has been turned to magnetite. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at this one, um, you can kind of catch the shine down there at the bottom. This actually still has some good good unaltered metal in there. Ooh. I, got, I got my new shirt. Your background is gone now. Sorry, no. <laughs> All right, so the first thing, I know it's not diagonite, but uh, I got this nice little Seacoat Allen from our, uh, our buddy at uh, Rocks on the Ground. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. Those are uh, really, really A lot of character. Ones. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, and it was it was a nice size, and it was a great price. I, uh, Sweet. So, oh, yeah. And the cool thing is it's also... Oh, very nice. Look at that little metal bleb by the tip of your thumb. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a few little metal beads in there. I don't know if it's picking yeah. them up, but... Oh, it is. It's, yeah. a, it's a nice size piece. So yeah, yeah, that was the. Uh, that's a beauty. Wow! I like the that's... different. Tell me that's an. There. Tell me that's an H, right? Uh, uh H four. Yeah, nice. Slash okay. Five. Good. So that's that's beautiful, buddy. Um, to get on topic here, this is a little piece of the Erg Czech Diogenite. Mm hmm. That I picked up. Uh, when was your live sale? Last weekend, two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, on the second of. Let's see. This is the Taudini Orthopyroxene. I've shown mm. you guys this before, but uh, I really like it. Absolutely. So you're gonna see it again. Oh man! All those crystals popping out. I don't want to touch it because it gets. Uh, it, it's pretty friable, but. It's got those crystals poking out every which way, like oh, Jody's chocolate that, chip cookies. That is a pretty one. Awesome. <laughs> hey, guys, we are now checking in with a, a little bit of a flip, a little bit of change on the Meteorites 101 that, that we uh, started running several months ago. Um, we're digging a little bit deeper into, right now, a certain family of Meteorites that we've been talking about a little bit today called Diagenites. Uh, as a scientific community has uh, he started off calling them the Schalkites and that was the only thing that was like it uh, and he kind of thought that they were uh, kind of full of olivine and, and that was kind of a group he set off all by itself. Um, they then got renamed to the Diogenites uh, by Tishermac uh, and basically what he said was he looked inside and looked inside a Schalka and said eh, I'm not seeing olivine in there uh, these are all orthopyroxene um, and so he took them and said, they're, you know, we're, we're not going to have a, a shelfkite group. We're going to have the Diogenites, named after uh, Diogenes. Um, and Diogenes was uh, an old Greek philosopher, and he was the first one who postulated that meteorites fall from the sky. Oh, cool. Uh, so back in ancient times, he was the, the pioneer that brought us meteorites before we denied for a couple hundred years that meteorites <laughs> fell from the sky. And then... Um, so we should see, theoretically, uh, out of the Vestin meteorites, um, more of that transition from, you know, the 90% orthopyroxene and start getting some of these blends where you get more um, olivine-rich material and more calcium-plagioclase-rich material. 
Uh, then you have those olivine diagenites that I talked about. And there's 14 of those total. Uh, and then there are 49 polymic diagenites. Uh, so that means it's a diagenite that has different subtypes of diagenite in there that we're going to talk about uh, all mixed together. Um, and then down at the bottom of that slide, uh, out of all those meteorites, there's but uh, 12 total falls that are diagenites. Um, so when we talk about orthopyroxenes, usually what we see is we see a, like an FS number on there, and that's telling you what percentage of ferrocylite they are, um, whether they're 100% iron or 100% magnesium or some blend in between. Um, this is the actual um, triangle I was telling you about, where you can see olivines on top, orthopyroxenes on the bottom left, and plagioclase is on the uh, bottom right. Um, so you can see your, your regular uh, uh, orthopyroxene diagenites are down in that bottom left corner, and they're 90% orthopyroxene. As you start creeping up in the olivine content, you get those olivine orthopyroxene diagenites. Uh, then you move up a little more in the olivine content, you get to that 40 to 90% range of olivine. You get the Hesbergdites, um, and then you move all the way to the top of the pyramid, and you get those dunites, which are 90% uh, plus all olivine. Uh, and then you have a couple outliers that kind of creep towards the right-hand side of the triangle, mm -hmm. which is uh, calcium plagioclase, and those would be your neuritic diagenites. There is this one left, which is actually nice and has a little bit of crust there on the corner. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the type that is high in calcium plagioclase. Uh, so this is a neuritic diagenite. Um, mm -hmm. So on that triangle you were talking about going back and looking at, uh, this is where you're starting to slide a little bit over to the right. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to get a bunch of uh, more than 10% of uh, calcium plagioclase mixed in there. Uh, and the rest of it is, is all um, orthopyroxene. Uh, this is my uh, bird check um, diagenite, NWBA 14056, mm -hmm. scored from Topers Live Sale. And you had a few more of those that you, uh, that you listed. Did those all disappear already? I think I have one left. Now we're going to a 200 gram one. Wow. Wow. This is my own classification. This is uh, NWA 12953. Mm -hmm. And for those that are watching me live, they might have seen me glance at my arm tattoo to make sure I got the number right because I don't have it written anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the biggest hunk. This is the biggest hunk of my own diagenite that I have left. It's not the main mass, but mm -hmm. there, it does have fusion crust. Yeah. And it's not as friable as some diagenites, yeah. but it's definitely not a cutter, I would say. It, the slices aren't going to be translucent and, and you know, beautiful right. from that point of view. Moving to a third witness diagenite fall. This is mm -hmm. Tatooine. Mm -hmm. and, and Tatooine is a meteorite you'll see a lot of, in a lot of places, but rarely will you see one that big and that beautiful. Thank you. This is actually a Christmas present from my wife. So yeah, yeah. yeah. only nice things will be said about my wife. Yeah, yeah, this is gorgeous. She has what? extremely good taste in diogenites. Yes. <laughs> this is such eye candy. I had to show off this one, too. This is uh, Topper's uh, melt with this uh, mm -hmm. little organization of planets here. Yes. Right? That is so cool. <laughs> wow. That looks beautiful, man. Yeah. I, I, other... So th this, is, this is one is a bit more complicated because it's an impact melt. Just like uh, on fusion crusts, some fusion crusts uh, don't have the same thermal coefficient of expansion as the inside of the rock. So when the meteorite cools, the crust will pull apart into little uh, plates uh, and, and we call the, the cracks contraction cracks. Uh, and that same effect happens with, with the melt. And some of the other pieces that Topper had showed it really, really well. Hello, meteorite collectors. 
Today I would like to show what I got in my last package for Maxim, the asteroid miner. Maxim was kind enough to sell me one of his tiny Kolang fragments. The other side was a wonderful surprise, both for me and apparently Maxim, who had no idea that there was any crust on any of his fragments. <laughs> Here you can see the fusion crust in a bit more detail in directional reflected light. Beautiful. Yeah, no doubt. Look and at this that. This is in cross polarized light. Mm. It's got a weird dark pink color. Mm. Isn't it wonderful? I've also received this cool surprise gift from Maxim. Buzzard Cooley is my first Canadian meteorite, as well as my first H4. Mm -hmm. In cross-polarized light, the free matter appears very dark and is actually better observed under normal diffused lighting shown here. Look at that. Well, you might perhaps be wondering, is that a bit of fusion crust on the left? It doesn't really matter, as this is the other side of the micro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was a bit of fusion crust. Mm -hmm. Look at that. This next one is an, another witnessed uh, one. That's that's a really famous one. The write-up on that one in Nininger's books is so cool. Mm -hmm. And that's from Weld County. That's from the county my dad was born in. That's hmm. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Is this it crust one, there? Yeah, that's that's a really nice crust line in there. Wow. So this darkened area is towards the left, or shock darkened, and if and the one in the uh, very lower left actually has some little vesicles in it that show up on your reflected uh, light photo. Yeah, down in there, mm -hmm. right there, um, that I purchased from Topher almost a year ago. That I finally decided to cut open and see what's in the inside of it. You got a beautiful oh, cut down the nice. length of the crust there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I thought it was it was gonna break up. It's one I've been saving um, yeah. until I got better at cutting. Um, kind of looks like Kentucky if you laid on its side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is gorgeous. It is. Yeah, it ended up turning out really beautiful. I because mm. the outside was kind of weathered and it looked like it might break up during cutting or lapping, and mm. it it wowed me. Well, <laughs> the uh, the green crystals in there that the, the, what gives it their greenness is called their sodium diopside crystals, and mm -hmm. they wear away quicker than the materials around them. So on the exposed surfaces, the sodium diopside green crystals, the um, kryptonite, if you will, of the stone, uh, wears away first, and that's really unfortunate because that's the super ultra beautiful, possibly rare, uh, scientifically important crystal. And, and a roll over lip all the way around and such, but but check out the flow lines on this puppy that's, flowing out of those divots. That oh. is wild. Oh yeah, they're, they're radial. That's pretty. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting that we were talking about um, all the diagenites and how they trace back to um, Vesta along with the Howardites and uh, Eucrites. Um, and it's like, well, one of the questions that we usually get asked is like, well, how do you know that they're from this asteroid? It's like, well, because Vesta is one of the largest asteroids and it's been really well studied based on whatever instruments that we currently have. Now, um, NASA is sending a mission to what's known as the Trojan asteroids, and if you can see on the screen, you see the the little spinning thing, and all the um, the little spinning things are the planets. Um, Jupiter is out at the edge, and in between Jupiter, you see those two groups of green, um, and those are known as the Trojan asteroids. Carbonaceous type asteroid. 
So yeah. as as you can see, this is a lively group. I can't shut them down. I can't shut them up. The science is just bubbling <laughs> forth. We are going to call it a quit to the recording. And everyone, we're going to keep staying. So enjoy. Have a great week, guys. Thanks a lot. Right. Thank you, okay. Tom, a great one. See you next week, everybody. Yeah.